All right, here we go, the final couple of pieces. This is dry, so I'm going to unmask this, see how clever I've been. Not too bad. Yeah, they really didn't have much of my stick, but that looks alright. Okay guys, here we are at the fun part. Here's the wrapped up glass that I've masked off and done all the painting I need to. Well that I know that I need to. So at this stage you clean off all the salt and clay, you assemble it and then you find the spots you've missed. So that's the way it works unfortunately. Here's my little Nova Corp logo at the front. So just pull all the tape off and you will find tape after you've even put the blaster back together. See like there's an example. Bit of tape got on there and inadvertently masked it so they'll have to be repainted. That's not a great issue. Now I've got a lot of paint on here, uh, sorry, a lot of tape on here, I should say, over my U Butte grey background. Because this stuff's been down here for a couple of days, and uh, masking tape tends to dry out and go hard after a while. It's only supposed to stay on it for as long as it takes the paint to dry, really. So here's the fun bit so, a scrubbing brush, water. I mean, if you've seen this before, you know what I'm going to say. As soon as you knock a bit of the clay off, paint off, salt off, the water gets to the clay, the clay dissolves, and you get your effect. All the way along where there's the black metal surface. Now, this side hasn't got the battery box and things in it, so I don't have to be that careful. You can see the clay in there that's come out from that little spot. And then it's gone. And because this is, you know, enamel based paint, it's tough as, so, and this is just a little plastic scrubbing brush. I've even used those um, Chuck scouring pads and they work really well as well. So, there we go. So, now I can go over this with silver and add more wear and tear, add more rust, paint over stuff that's too big like that, like that, like that. So, that's how you do it, step by step, each piece. What else I've done, I've got this little, the front end where I've got the weapon, you know, the brand, uh, the type of weapon is the Fusion Fire. Having spelt Fusion with two S's in the first place. Little note to you guys, always marry a school teacher. You'll, you'll never spell a word wrong. So, I've painted the fire part in red on both sides and then when that's dry I'm going to mask that off and paint the fusion in black. So I'll have fusion fire in black and red on the front of the weapon. Next is basically putting it all together. So I'll get that done and get back to you. Just a, another one of the exciting bits. I'm just taking the masking off this um, front bit that I've put the um, logo on, fusion fire. Now, I don't know how this is going to go because this, you can see here, is actually the leg off my tripod that has just fallen off and it's holding the whole thing up. So, well there we go, that looks good. Ah uh, yes, where I missed it. You can see the faint outline of an S there, because I actually spelt fusion with two S's. But that doesn't look too shabby at all, does it? That looks pretty good. So a little bit of touch up, to be expected. Not only from paint bleed, but also from my inability to spell. Very nice. Yep, that looks very good. Okay. Just whack it on where it's supposed to go. Put on the muzzle. This is just sitting here, roughly assembled. And I'll get the camera over ahead. But there we go. Partially done. Not too bad. Right, hi guys. Time to do the wiring for this thing. Now, firstly, I've got my camera bolted to the table, so sorry if it vibrates. Now, I have got these switches, which I got in the worker kit um, for the strife conversion. I think they work, despite my really bad soldering. So anyway, 
what I'm going to do is use one of these for the trigger and I'm going to use, I don't know what it's called, two-stage trigger or whatever. Um, so as the trigger comes back, it pushes down that, connects that, that starts the flywheels going, and then I've got a little, just one of their little jam door buttons, which I'm going to wire in, which will start the conveyor belt, driving the darts into the uh, flywheels. So one pull does everything. So all I'm going to do is wire it all up out of the blaster to make sure it works. So it's going to be a very simple system, two 9 volts, one running each, each set of motors. Then chuck it in the blaster. Motor wiring done, time for the test. So, that's that part done. And that goes like that. So we're good. This is all going to come out the top and just make its way down through the body of the blaster through the trigger. I'll have to test this um, switch next. So I'll get that wired up and I'll get back to you in a minute, guys. Good morning, fellow Nerf Afflicted. Uh, I was in the middle of wiring when I realized I'm gonna be putting the wiring in this half of the body shell, so I need to finish off this cable first. How to hold this onto the body. I just don't want it flopping around. And the simplest thing I'm gonna do, these little fellows, tangent ties, cable ties, whatever you want to call them. And you know, I want them to be um, like a design feature as well, you know, just something to make it a bit more visually interesting. So, like there, there. Now, one thing I don't want to do is space them neatly, because that won't look any good, I don't think. Um, so, my top piece comes down to there, so I've got all this room, so I know for a fact I can't drill into resin, because it'll crack, so first one there, next one probably here, and then possibly two, one there and one there to drag that up so it disappears in the body and that's where I can cut it off. So what I've got is a little tiny little burr on my Dremel um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to drill two holes very close together so this can go in through and it'll be fixed on the inside so all you'll see on the outside is a little strap. Drill some holes. I've got plenty of these so I've got no problem pinching this up right now to hold it in place and still leave enough slack to get the cable through. Take it through to the first click. There we go. So, that will look like that. Similar. So, you see where I'm going with this? And when that's pulled tight, that'll pretty much hide those holes. Okay, okay. Right. That's ready to have the um, electronics put in, the switches and stuff. I'm currently in the middle of putting the harness together. I started yesterday, but it just got too hot. Mercifully, it's cool today. So I'll finish that, then I'll figure out where to put it in because I've left enough electronic, uh, ele I've left enough wire to make it rooted any way I want. So if I'm going to put the, um, if I'm going to put the switches up here first, I need to check that there's no great issue there. So if that goes back, that lump hits the first switch, which turns on the flywheels, and then have the second switch here, which is just a little um, activator button, to put it in up against that. Yeah. That'll just um, drive the conveyor. Okay, let's get on with it. It's a nice cool night and I've got my epoxy putty. So I'm going to put these switches in, but just in an effort to save myself some epoxy putty, I've cut this piece of um, oh, whatever the retaliator body. It's got a nice little shelf profile and it's just gonna sit there and this one is just going to sit somewhere like that. And when I pull the trigger, the flywheel will start. And I'll position it so as soon as that trigger moves, the button's down enough. So I'm going to glue that there, and then I'll drill that through there like that. And may not even need epoxy putty for that front, that one. I'll just put two holes straight through. So I know where it's going through. The end of that is lining up with this little bracket on the inside, so I don't have to worry about messing it about. So, the usual procedure, wet the area to be glued with a little bit of acetone. Like so. Now if I put this back in here, it'll actually mark the plastic sort of like contact cement I guess. It should be more than enough. I'll put 
some on these feet as well. Let's chuck that back in there. So what I'm going to do now is take out those screws, position the piece, drill a single hole through, put one screw in, position the other one. Now I'll drill the hole through there. No, oh, no, there we go, straight through. Now before I try and screw that through the book into that, I'm just going to screw it into the um, plastic itself just to get a thread going. There you go. So that's cut straight through. So now I've got a thread in that piece of plastic. It'll be a bit easier to put the screw in. So as you can see, I've got it completely in a different place to where I planned to have it, but it's still, I've still got it to work. Okay. Cool. So, that is part A. Done. And now I've got to work out where this one goes. Right, guys. Here we go with the test fire. Just got the body tacked together, got a single 9 volt battery feeding off the two sets of wires and I've used the trigger, the whole trigger unit which has got a long bit at the top. God, I don't think I've even filmed any of it. Um, Alright, got 10 rounds in this 12 round magazine just so I don't over, overstress the spring. Let's see how we go. We should have 10 rounds flying out the end here. Making all sorts of noise. Here we go. Oh, about three in the last group, which is pretty impressive. No jams, no jams. There we go. We're on our way. Okay, we're at final assembly. Now, um, I did a few things last night. I think I filmed it, I can't remember. Done a few things this morning. So I've got my two switches there, pull the trigger back. First one activates the flywheel, second one, when it's right back, activates the conveyor. Blaster fire starts. Put my red dot scope in there, a red dot solder say button there to activate it. There you go, you can see that. My hoses, detailed the inside, oh, turn that off. Detailed the inside with some hoses either side, just hot glued them in place so you can see them through the side. So, uh, just at the last minute painted the switch as well, the trigger. So time to, oh yes, and I, and I had to gouge out most of the battery box to the two 9 volts to fit in, but it worked. So, putting it together finally. The little bit of plastic in there I put in there to hold the um, switches so, and fill that hole on both sides. So I'll just get in there with a brush and some black paint and take care of that later. Now I've discovered through trial and error, the best way to put these screws in is pick a point and work out from it, because that way you're going to eventually, if you put it at different ends and something's not going together, you've got to pull it apart to find out what's not working, but this way you can just squish it as you go and you should be able to work out what's happening. Last little bit of detail painting, got some stencils here I've printed up on my little circuit machine. Uh, the Novacorp, which I painted upside down on this side, so I've got to redo it. The uh, This is the cover for the magazine, the charge cell, so I've put some sort of um, energy rating there. It's probably completely incorrect and inappropriate, but <laughs> at this stage I don't really care. So I am going to mark those up, spray them. When they're dry, 
do the dirty wash and then the smoke and stuff when we're done. Right now all I have to do is wait for this red to dry. Put some tape over that and then just paint this number in the black. So just paint that black like so. The magazine I sprayed uh, with the, the vinyl dye so it doesn't take up any, you know, there's no thickness there to affect it because it's a pretty tight fit. done a lot of work on this for a while. I've had a, a 3D printer that's gone feral on me so I've been trying to fix that. Now um, I think I mentioned I was going to replace these screws with um, uh, countersunk ones which finally arrived in the mail after two months and four days which is great. So I countersunk a hole there, put it in, worked great except of course they're black. So Stuck 50 odd of them in the top of a box and I've got white headed countersunk screws which I'm going to do now. So we'll just put this first one in this uh, hole I've already done, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that definitely looks better. Can't even see it. I'm just using a grinding head. You've got a lot more control. You just little pressure. You grind out a little bit at a time. Use a drill in plastic, especially soft plastic like this filament. The drill can catch it, catch in the corner and drag it in and drill a hole straight through. Yeah, I'll do this one first because so, so you can see what's going on. Sorry about it, I'm not closer, but the focal length of this camera isn't great. So pull out the old screw. And there's a reasonable indentation where that head has um, pushed into plastic, so it doesn't take much. So I don't believe that's deep enough yet, but I'm not going to try and do it in one go. Because that's just a recipe for disaster. That's not bad. I can still feel it flush, uh, sorry, proud above the surface, so a bit more. And after I do a few of these, I'll probably get a hang for it and be able to do it in one hit, but uh, taking the tortoise approach at the moment. As soon as I see a little bit of material come grinding out, I stop. There's a little burr on the edge which could sit up. When we're talking about um, you know, a tenth of a millimetre, or even less at this stage, everything counts. Perfect, look at that. That just looks so much better than the, the second one. Yeah, that's good. That's, that looks so much better, yeah. You may also notice I've masked off this area because I'm going to paint these vents white, then we'll have some smoke and soot on them, so. 
Okie dokie, got it sanded down, feels reasonably smooth, I can feel, still feel some imperfections in some places, masked off the front and back, so what I'm going to do is give it a quick spray of undercoat just along that line. Now if things disappear, great, nice and smooth, but there will be little imperfections, you can count on it, but I need to know where they are, so be right back. Right, so there we go with the grey, still a bit tacky of course, but you know, that is going to be obvious, great big hole there. Few little marks, not too bad, which is good. So once this paint's dry, I'll go over with sand it off. Sand off the paint, because I want to get rid of the paint. I don't want that underneath putty. Then run some thin smear of Temenya putty through the big holes. Okay, guys, I got a bit ahead of myself. I put on the red undercoat, um, the salt, then the silver, then the clay masking, then the white top coat. So it's ready to be taken apart and pull off the, the masking. So we'll do that first. That was easy. So this should be just as easy. There we go. Looking good. So one of the things I was worried about was the masking tape pulling off paint off the surface of the uh, resin, but it doesn't seem to be happening. So happy, happy, joy, joy. Right, so time. Now I've stuck this lens in, so I don't want to get fill, fill this thing up with water. Simply getting it dry is going to be a problem, so I'll just keep it that way and start getting rid of the the marking. Right, so there's the blaster. The um, bracket's already there. And that just sits on top in a, because of the curve, the shape of the, the scope, it actually sits at a certain point. I just have to find that right point. Yeah, yeah, that's immensely better than the first two. It just blends in so well with the shape. One thing I was worried about was um, being resin cast, this stuff is pretty brittle and drilling into it is not a good idea apparently um, but somebody did make a comment on one of my posts using a soldering iron to melt a hole which sounds like a good idea right all these screws in the brackets are done now i just got to screw this on where it's going to hide some of the other holes now interesting little note i used my burner just to heat up the tip of the drill bit to get through the holes Except on this one, I just drilled it through and just didn't experiment and the screw was much harder to get in so I did a little bit of heating and drilling and it went straight in. So that tip, whoever gave it to me, it seems like a good one. Um, the heat will help soften the resin so you don't get chips. I didn't get any chips or cracks on any other part of it. So the next thing is just to drill through these and put some screws in there. Now I have to be careful here because the mechanism's under there with the flywheels and everything so I don't want to drill into that. That would be really annoying cut off the burr on the inside when you're mating things together there we go right okay the beastie is pretty much finished scopes on looking pretty good now at this stage I always have a look and see if anything that stands out that just doesn't look right that needs uh, especially paint wise it needs to touch up before the weathering because you can't really do it after the weathering because if you paint fresh paint over weathered paint, you get a nice fresh paint spot like I've got there when I painted this. I'm hoping the weathering blends it in. So the thing that stood out to me here is this grey. It goes up and it stops here. I'm just going to extend it all the way up. I've put some tape down as a masking. I'm just going to use a spray can straight onto a reasonably clean surface and paint it by hand. Good. And what I'm going to do is just go around this screw and leave that as painted as white so it appears to be the actual bracket that's holding this bit of the rubber handle in. Yes, 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 I like that already. That looks much better, definitely. And there we go. Done. Off the masking. Done.
doesn't it? Amazing, just a little reposition. So what I'm going to do, spray some white enamel in on a palette or something and just paint around the edges so when it comes to actual painting colours uh, there's no leakage and if there's any leakage with the white it's not going to be noticed because it's white. Uh, and then the actual painting of the sun is a white dot in the centre then a yellow fade to yellow fade to orange fade to red and what I might do is actually and then uh, even before taking the final masking off and everything going around the edge using the the vinyl as a guide and just using a black felt tip in and just inlining it so I'll get some masking paper so what I've done I've just gone all around the edges with some white paint just to seal them in about half an hour I'll start the spraying I don't need to go around the face because I'm going to pull off those stickers and just use it like paint by numbers and fill it in right guys about half an hour later I've just put a little bit of enamel from a rattle can in there some yellow and I'm just going to start this painting so let's go now remembering the artwork has a white spot right in the center so I'm going to start around the edge and if necessary I can always go back and put some more white in Right, that yellow dried very quickly, so I'm going to go straight on with the orange. Starting from the outside, working in. I am thinking... We don't need the red. It looks pretty good as it is. Right guys, here we are next day, ready to paint this. So the first thing is to take off like um, the, the stencils. And I'm just gonna, when you take these off, you just pick them up with the edge of a craft knife. And I've got a reasonably easy to see um, outline there and I've left the eye up there so I can re reference it could even actually put it down a bit closer because I can pull that off easy enough in a minute and what I've got is some uh, Taminia rubber black I'm using rubber black because one it's all I've got but two it's it's not as deep and as harsh black as black and a little bit of thinner that's dirty but that doesn't matter because I'm working with black And a very fine brush and I want to be able to do nice fine lines and I'm working on the furthest bit away because I don't want to work on this and lean over it and smudge the, the what do you call it the mouth but I'm gonna to have to use this because I'm an old person and my eyes are shocking so let's have a look okay that's one eye so pull this one up And get back to this. So, what I did, I found an old black felt tip and I went around the edge and it was a bit rough, so I went and found another one. And since I've come back, I've noticed the stuff that I put down has faded a bit, so I'm going around it again. This is just to give sort of a, a sharp edge to the uh, graphic, it'll step, make it stand out a bit more because it is orange and yellow and white on a white background, so it's not that prominent but because I have to seal this with a clear flat before I do the wash this texture whatever you want to call it felt tip uh, the ink should be sealed as well and so hopefully the Tamania wash won't do anything to it even though the Tamania wash is pretty benign stuff it's not that um, solvent really strong solvent so I'm gonna do the letters as well just to make them stand out a bit more. Okie dokie. Let's see how good or bad that is. I'm 
pretty happy with that so far. So a few spots where I've missed. Right, you'll have to excuse me because I need my eyes for this. That's, pre that's pretty cool, I like that. Now with a... Um, oh, s***! Back soon, guys.